this is uh, a collection which uh, I went through with a lot of pain, with a lot of anguish, but with also a lot of freedom of the mind. I touched areas of peace, reconciliation, surrender to a great extent. So you will find a mixed bag in this collection called The Sun Does Not Set. I'd like to say a word about the title. Why the sun does not set? Because this is an everyday truth, but we don't speak it. It's like everything we utter. We are used to lies. We lie to each other happily. Exactly like the way we say the sun rises and the sun sets. Neither of this happens. We know that the sun does not set deeply, but we never say this. In the same way we hide a lot of things about disease, about pain, about suffering. And you can see the koklapan, the hollowness of our living, which is what I'm struggling with, because I see this hollowness takes something away from us. Rather than living authentically, truthfully, we have a tendency to live falsely. And as we live falsely, we go away from our real being. And for me now, being is different from doing and having. So you can have and you may not know anything about being, which is a mindless space, um, a space without a mind, without the flutter of thoughts. So here you can see the shifts that have happened to the mind which started writing poetry, got involved with relationship with ID and now quite happy without an idea, in a floating space where one is more joyful, more joyful. Let me start with my mother. This collection celebrates my mother, who was a Spartan, who was a Stoic, and here I'm celebrating her because she belongs to that world of duality, where pain was real, suffering was real, and the body and the mind was always in agony. And I saw her as an agonized woman, struggling with all the assaults of the age. This bag of bones, wrapped in tired skin, grease like crushed paper, is not my mother. She's the woman inside, a tigress asleep, watching us, the cubs, swatting flies, growling at intruders who stifle our glowings. She's the dawn before the dawn who wakes us lightly, gets us running clean, schooled, fed and combed, watched and wrapped. She's not my mother, with sunken eyes, battling for light, to see us around, willing life to paint again on yellowing canvas, now blurred and blotchy. Her road baptized by fire and flat, saw her always straight, simple, sarried white, questionless, surrendering to the cycles of chop and change, knowing nothing happened, happened as what. She's not my mother. This wrinkled parchment, twitching against sleepless pillows, a drying leaf, tossing in gusts of pain, stalking death patiently, knowing well that waiting was a vain pastime. She was made for extreme weather, fire and ice, a ready martyr, fearing not the fire walks or the icicle walls of age. Alone, she had waited for husband and sons, listening to the unseen clock, till a flurry of white gasps and twitches, she was whisked away, leaving behind the deeper quiet on creased pillows, on sheets askew, shadowing memories of that tired walk through fire and ice. That's my mother. This one I like because very often we don't have words to express the angst of living and it gets stuck in our throat. Stuck in our throat. And it, this one is called a sob. A strangled, icicled sob. Stinging raw the throat. Heart, guts, threatening to thaw, spout like a wave, a tsunami. A castrated sob for all things the earth has denied. 
crushing, choking all things dear and secret to the heart of man. We cannot fight or war, for sometimes fury has no voice, has no pain, has no tears, and anguish may just be a strangled sob, threatening to blow into a wave, a tsunami. I like this one too, which I've dedicated to my sister Nirmala. Uh, it's called the Mystic Smile of Ramana. I went to Tirvannamalai down south uh, and I found myself all quite stunned to see that such a human being walked the earth and was able to hold his own against everything. The Mystic Smile of Ramana, more mysterious than Mona Lisa. This mystic smile of Ramana beckons you silently on while you pull your conditionings and a million thoughts move warmly around your shivering flame. For you know not better than what you know. The way you walk, talk, think and act is what you do best. And when he beckons you quietly on with his mystic smile, more mysterious than Mona Lisa, you wonder whether there lies another truth beyond the desires, dreams that you have cuddled into or you think you have huddled into. This one is to my granddaughter, to Amara. It's almost like a nursery rhyme, but I like it. It says the sun does not sit. To Amara. Who told you, little one, that it is the sun that rises and the sun that sets? No, my little one, it is we who come and we who go. Around the glowing sun we grow. Night after day, day after night, every day. What can we do, little one, to keep the smile and the tears at bay? There's little you can do to keep your smile through rain and shine unless you source the light, the lamp within, which will help bear the grief and strife through rain and shine, night and day, love and hate, fear and tear. The source will keep you smiling all the way. At the feet of Arunachala, this is the mountain in Tirvanamalai where I spent some moments and enjoyed this, this whole peace. At the feet of Arunachala, I don't want to return to this body, life after life, with its million masks, with its million minds, taking me from the source, silent and still, or is it the source that is taking me to these many bodies? with its infernal minds to and fro, to and fro. This is the connection that's very close to my heart and I believe it takes you to those spaces. 